Hello, welcome back to Bard's Tale 3. Uh, this is Jay Rodman. Um, today we are going to go on to our fourth, no, our fifth world. Our fifth world out of seven. Um, or fifth time out of seven. If we include, I guess, the original Scarabray, it's sort of the sixth location. Uh, and it's feeling like we're definitely more than halfway through the game. I'm getting a certain energy from that. Um, anyway, but the first thing we have to do, of course, is um, find our way. Oh, first I have to, of course, fix the sound so I can hear it while playing properly. And um, find our way to the world of Kinestia, the time of Kinestia. Uh, it's the it's the dimension of machines, so I don't know if that makes it futuristic or just sort of an alternate development path. Maybe it's even an alternate place. I don't. Still kind of unclear on all of that. I'm not sure if it will ever become clear. But we're going to Kinestia. That's that's the part that matters. Oh, and we don't get a. Uh... There's no there's no uh, auto map type behavior, of course in this location, so I can't really show you where I am, but whatever. I went to the east, and then south past this thing to about here, and now over to the dwarf mine. And I think I've already learned the spell to travel to Canestia. And the old, ye old copy protection. So we're uh, we have to pick a value of ten ambrosia, which I think is the next one actually after Canestia. Tar quarry. It's interesting. It's giving me all ten ambrosia locations. Wand of power. Oh, this is going to be a failure because it's a four. It's a four parter. Those seem to always not work. There may be like some difference between. The Amiga MS DOS implementation of the code wheel and the 8 bit implementation of the code wheel, something like that. Because I'm very doubtful that this thing is just wrong. This data set is just wrong because it's been around for a while and um, some people seem to, you know, someone went to the trouble to implement all this and didn't, you know, put a, a disclaimer on it that it's wrong all the time. But I know the four answer parts are always wrong in the Apple II and the Commodore 64 both. Illyria. So this one's going to work because it's a three-parter. Shadow Canyon and Crystal Key. The reason some of them are two parts versus three parts is because the code wheel had multiple layers on which the answers were stored. It's kind of a complicated little device. Okay, so here's a milestone. We're being asked to put in Dungeon Side B, which is something we haven't used so far during our entire playthrough. Also, it's interesting that it starts us with a dungeon and not a character disc. Uh, makes us think we're going to start Kinestia in a dungeon. The ground seems worn here. I forgot to cast my set of spells. Uh, oh, by the way, I mentioned I, I remembered what the magician's cloak does. It casts batch spell, which is a fair amount of points, but you don't end up doing it a lot, so um, it doesn't seem all that valuable, which is why I threw it away. Okay, so we did start in the southeast corner of a region. We finally get a new uh, wall set, which is probably a virtue of being on a new disc. I was a big fan of 8-bit Bard's Tale 1 having different wall sets for most of the dungeons, whereas the 16-bit versions, the so-called 16 I don't really like that terminology because it's completely inaccurate. Um, I guess I won't get into the details of that right now. But um, uh, in any event, on the PC and Amiga and 2GS and whatever, uh, more so, le less so on the 2GS, which had a few different tile sets, but in general, there was not a lot of variation in the look of the dungeons 
in PC, Amiga, Atari ST, Apple II GS, etc. Where is that target thing? Oh yeah, this is what I've been using for the icon for uh, teleporting in and out of a world. And it's going to give me the door I don't like again, I'm sure. Why don't I get footprints there? I guess it doesn't start you off with footprints? I don't know. Um, this guy. Oop, wrong keystroke. And there's something special over there, but I'm not going to worry about where it is yet. Huh, I think I just walked on a trap. I'm not going to move again with the hopes that... Um, traps don't go off by standing still. I have to turn, though. Uh... Oh, I guess we don't get messages. Um, I guess the well-worn, the ground is worn overrides. That sort of thing. Now, for now, I'm going to leave the fights in, because I don't know these enemies at all. Ratchet Reavers. Um... I'm down on hit points probably from being lazy, from whatever I was doing on the way back from Lucentia. I will cast cold on them to do some little damage from a distance before I figure out what they do. I don't think stun has the same range. I feel like electricity damage should work really well on them because they're... I don't know. Are they electronic? They they may just be mechanical. In which case, electricity damage doesn't seem relevant. Well, they're now in range for a stun. What should I be casting on them? I don't know. Flame column? Well, there's not that many of them. So maybe I don't need to do any more spell casting. Not a big change in experience points. And I think I've I've definitely gotten a shorthand some things. I don't remember if it was a shorthand amulet. Carved from solid rock, the dwarven castle you find yourself standing in radiates strength and power. Sadly, however, its walls also bear the scars of war, and many of them are very recent. Okay, so we've teleported ourselves into a castle. I don't know whether it's underground or above ground, but somehow dwarven castle to me... I don't know, castle is just above ground, but I've always... I don't know, I sort of envision this as being underground. It could be either. But there's uh, there's battle going on inside a castle. Normally, battle goes on outside a castle, so this is just... You know, it's 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 in the process of being overrun, or they're fighting off an invasion. You know, there's there's fighting in the hallways, sort of a scenario. Um, so that makes you feel like that makes me feel like this is a um, you know, like a, a very sharp moment in in some sort of struggle. 
But I'm going to be really lazy and type all this into my uh, map editor, and see you in a moment. And we're back. Uh, and that trap is definitely a trap that I guess I'll remove now. I had that odd moment of, oh, I should mark this wraparound detected something. But I have no idea how big things are yet. Maybe I should take a look at that. How big is this space? Uh, it's pretty big. Oh my, maybe like... 15 north to south, something like that? I guess theoretically I could count. Because it's like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So somewhere around <clears throat> 16, 17. East, west, it's maybe a little more manageable. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I don't know, maybe about 20 across. I guess it's the aspect ratio of characters are they're taller than they're wide, so... I was misled, A.K.A. misled. Anyway, I'm gonna set my grid size to approximately that, just for now. Why am I not seeing the word grid? That's right in front of me. Um... Say 16 north south, maybe 20 east west. Oh, it's the other way around, right? Anyway, we'll figure it out. There's. I'm not gonna worry for now, I guess, about the exact position of the something though on the wraparound. To the east, we have two traps. And we can still sense it from there. So it's something like here. Uh, so the first something I think is this message. The second something is a hit point drain. Somehow... If, so if there's a hit point drain in a, you know, lair of a dragon or something, or a wizard's palace. I'm just like, whatever, they did that. But if there's hit point drain in the middle of a dwarf's castle, that's very curious. <laughs> do, 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 they, do they themselves get their hit points drained when they when they go there? Um, or maybe this is an artifact of the war that's going on? Anyway, I'm just gonna keep wandering around in the hit point drain, like I usually do. Ah, and here we have, of course, the, uh, the ever-present Hawkslayer. I was looking for another word, not finding it. Um, Hawkslayer was waiting for us. Standing before you, blocking the hallway, you see Hawkslayer. He's younger than the last time you met, and shows none of the signs of his long adventuring career. So this is, um, Hawkslayer at the beginning. Those little funny things like his long adventuring career, like, as if we know more about him than we've ever seen anything. I don't know, it's like, it, it's almost like we're playing D&D &D and the other guy playing at the table is telling me about his character by talking about his long adventuring career I haven't seen. Which, for, for what it's worth, that is actually where the Hawkslayer character comes from. It's a character of a gamer, I forget his name at the time, we could go look it up, who uh, contributed to the storyline of this game and they inserted his Dungeons and Dragons character into the 
into the sequence, which is kind of why it's a little bit like all this stuff about the person that doesn't matter that someone is telling you because that's what people sometimes did playing tabletop games. Anyway, he's younger. He's just long adventuring career. Uh, he stares at you and says, "The old one said I'd find allies, but I don't work with just anyone. I only want smart allies." Consider this riddle. Colder than myself, I cover myself with myself and shrink so I can grow large again. So, that riddle makes no sense to me. Um, even knowing the answer. Like, colder than myself. Well, does that mean you have different parts and some of them are colder than others because that's true of pretty much anything. Um, uh, what else could it mean? I don't know. I cover myself with myself. Well, that is again one of those things where it's like true of nothing but yet everything. Like, you know, anything that's three-dimensional has layers and some of those layers cover themselves. Is this a thing that folds onto itself? Like some kind of jellyfish or whatever? Yeah, and the truth is, no. Like, <laughs> it doesn't really work. Uh, like, maybe a river, I guess, because it, like, uh, tur has turbulence, so, like, it, you know, the different parts of the top, they cover themselves themselves, but it could, there could be so many different things. Uh, I can't remember the last part. If you can't answer a simple riddle less simple, I don't know how you survive. I better come along and keep you safe. Oh! So if you get it wrong, he offers to join anyway. But the answer... Oh, well... Maybe I... whatever. The answer... I guess it doesn't maybe matter whether you get it right or wrong. The answer is Iceberg. And the only reason you know the answer to this puzzle is because if you work with him in Arborea, he tells you I never knew how you knew the answer was Iceberg. So then, if we don't answer Iceberg here, have we destroyed the space-time continuum? I... Anyway, I'm just being snarky. We're not going to use him, though, because, of course, as always, um, he's weaker than we are. Yeah, we can't let him join anyway, so... But I don't know which way to go. I could go to east or to go north. I'm going to choose north because there's a spells waiver and I want to get that out of the way. I want to deal with the pain sooner rather than later. Let's zoom the map in a bit. You don't need to see the entire possible space. Uh, north here is like a trap and some spells wavering somewhere. Oh, I just stepped on the trap. I'm not very clever. Well, I set off the trap. Great. We can also, from the south, detect this trap is exactly where I guessed it is. Um, so I've been all around this room. We know there's a trap detectable from the east, from here. So, I'll put these down. From this location, we can see a spinner and an anti-magic. If we back up one, can't see either. So, this one is a guess. I don't know how to re reference that well. But this location is certain. And I'm going to leave this little alcove room. 
I don't know, this is not an alcove, whatever. Two by two room. Uh, nothing more detectable than spells wavering still. Okay, we just figured out the trap. The trap can't be there. a fight. Wow, look at that face. Oh my god, those eyebrows. Okay, we have silver droids, mech mashers, and magic siphons. I wonder if the magic siphons are like magic eaters in that they might just have a bit of spell resistance and that's it. Or if it's different and they are like, they could take our spell points away, they could get healed by our spells, I, I don't know yet. So the way I'm going to find out is by casting a lot of spells on them. It's, uh, it's dumb, but wow, those silver droids do a lot of damage. And there's a lot of them. This could be a very bad combat. Well, so far the magic siphons seem to have high resistance. I think the ones that are taking damage are taking half damage. Some of the silver droids are dying, the ones that are taking full damage. The mech mashers seem to be all taking full damage. Uh, the magic siphons are taking mostly half, and one of them took a quarter, I think? Well, we're down to one silver droid, so I don't think we're going to die to that one's attacks. I guess I could take out Grisnok. Mm. How's my overall damage situation? I need a restoration spell. And I'm just going to cast anti-magic, because I don't know what those magic siphons are going to do. Well, whatever they're doing, I seem to have tipped over whatever the threshold was to kill most of them. So many robot pictures. That's probably mostly why this is on disc two, is because probably disc one didn't have any of these robot pictures. Um, uh, Bard song kills overture. Attack these guys. Mm. If we're near the tipping point of them dying, I'm just going to use some force focuses, which are low spell point cost spells at this point. Maybe I should not be bothering to optimize. And they are all dead, Zord. Death. Death. Blades.
Um, so we didn't have new traps. I don't know if that's good or boring or what. Maybe there'll be some new traps. I guess I'm detecting traps on the other side of the map, but maybe I don't care. At least not before I've established how wide the map is. Okay, is this going to be anti-magic on the first step? Yes! And I just went here. To the west. Into a little dead end, I guess. Um, we can detect something and spells wavering from here, and I don't think we could detect it from here. So that suggests up here we have... Ever be an end to them? No, because the game generates more monsters as long as you like. Uh, Metal Maniacs. The Mecha Mashers did not seem to be very threatened. Involtron. Like Invulnerability Tron? Hmm. A robot with a breath weapon. Maybe I don't need, maybe I'm getting probably getting to the point where I don't need combat to be quite this slow. The threat level is not as high as I worried. I'm going to keep hiding and go after that breathing thing. But they do a lot of hand-to-hand -hand damage, so I'm going to cast Invisibility. Well, I don't know that these guys do, but it seems that the overall damage levels in hand-to-hand -hand attacks here are pretty high. Now we got our nine mech mashers in melee range, so I guess it's time to find out how much damage they do. Two. Two damage. That is not particularly scary. They debuffed me with it, you know, poison, but not quite far enough for the for backstabbing the un Involtron. That doesn't seem very... Let's do a Wither Fist. Hmm. 
down to two mech mashers. And let's try our backstab attempt. I didn't actually buff uh, Alina at all, so I think she's probably going to miss. But Yep. Alina, I don't know. Like, what is the deal? I don't remember our, my rogue on my last playthrough being sort of unreliable like this. It might be because of her low strength. It might be because last time I probably ended up crazy over leveled due to leveling bugs. Bring around Ballad, Hide, Luck, uh, Flesh, Restore on Elena, uh, Ogre Strength on Elena. Yeah, just a couple Ogre Strengths. Now, I don't think Ogre Strength actually technically raises your Strength stat. I think it actually increases your sort of battle skill. Which, I don't know if having more Strength would be equivalent to. I'm pretty sure getting more levels is equivalent to that, though. Okay, so I think we've got all kinds of anti-magic squares up there. Map. And if I turn to the north, am I still going to be able to see? Yes. So the north, I'm seeing this. Way up there, I think there's a wall here, but I don't really know. Definitely there's mostly empty space. Mm, the test... I'm pretty sure there's not anti-magic here, but... Magic compass seems like a cheap test. Oh, I'm wrong. This was the one I didn't know where things were. Okay, so now that I am here, there's a few things. One of them is I can see further. In a big space for an inside. Mm, and I'm pretty sure I'm out of anti magic. But. I feel like I'm going to step in more of it real soon. So I'm not going to go too crazy on the spells. I suppose spell point, this, this uh, habit I have of trying to conserve spell points is a little outdated. It's pretty important in Bard's Tale 1 because you have a limited spell point pool and you're never going to, you know, spell point regen isn't significant for the vast majority of the game. So I guess I should mark this this blue field that I maybe don't know exactly where it is because there isn't one here, <laughs> which is pretty significant. And also, I guess I should mark that spinner I can detect, which is here. Now I'm standing in this location, south, a trap, east a spinner, north nothing. Here we had south nothing, east the spinner still, 
north, we have a something. We also have a door. I don't know where the something is, but I'm going to walk along the wall and find it soon enough. Okay, so... The something was a spell point drain. Or a hit point drain, rather. And another one. Oh my goodness, there's so much, so much over here. Um, uh, we have a trap. Wait, wait. Where's my... <laughs> I thought I was just using the trap symbol. Why isn't it in my reason list? Okay, we have a trap. I guess there's something and something special, which are different, but that seems hard to remember. And a blue field somewhere. To the west, we have a blue field. We already have one on a map, and we had one here, so it's probably actually in this location. And north, we got, got well, we got something, but the something is probably more hit point drains. should be putting these walls down. One, two, three. This is a big space. Is this like a courtyard in the castle? In which case, why is the ceiling this black color? So I think we're in some kind of underground open hall. I didn't notice this earlier. From the east here we have a spinner and more anti magic. And to the west, we also have anti magic somewhere. Okay, now that I'm out of that, time to heal. Time to heal it all off. Just, just then, uh, my spells fell off. And maybe an anti-magic here too. Is there nothing from this location to the east? No, there's nothing. But from here, there's a something. And to the west, there's nothing. Nothing detectable. To the east from here, there's a spinner. Nothing to the west. I should put down some more walls. One, two, three, four. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Oh, I just moved forward when I didn't mean to. I just got the exact position of the spinner. Uh, the exact position of the spinner is... here. Okay, uh, what are we fighting? Head dicers? Iron droids? Are iron droids meaner or kinder than silver droids? Metal maniacs and alpha scramblers. I don't really want to have my head diced, so I'm going to kill those. Uh, kills Overture, general damage to everything. I feel like I should be worrying about my armor class more in this dungeon than the last few. Hide. 
Um, Elendor, what are you doing? We're going to reduce our chance to get hit. Mm, on the Alpha Scrambler. Stoning robots seems interesting. Especially mechanical ones. I could imagine them working not as well when made of stone as opposed to metal. Uh, I guess the real problem is all of the pivot points. How do you make, you know, stone that smoothly slides past other stone? I think that's where they would break down. Uh, iron droids maybe next uh elena can attack a metal maniac and miss instantly Ooh, our trebuchet, trebuchet song is doing real work. Okay, so overall... There may not be a big boost in experience points being gained here. Uh, per creature? But these are some heavily populated fights. That's interesting. Oh, I'm... start using scry site to make sure I understand exactly where I am. I'm here? Is that right? Maybe I assumed these were parallel. No, I miscounted. One, two, three, four, five. This is this is right. This ten is in the wrong spot. Six, seven, eight, nine. I started with one in the corner, it's the usual. I started counting from one instead of from zero. Typical off by one error. Okay, so I'm right here. Where I think I am, but facing south. Oh, the spell fell, fell off. I'm just gonna. It's time for batch spell. I was like, why can't I detect the anti-magic zones that I think are there? There they are. And there they are not. So, 
facing west, when do we first get the spell waiver message? We get the spell wa waiver message from here. That is in. These are in parallel. I mean, they're a mirror image of each other. That's not a big shock. So north here somewhere there's an odd. Which maybe I'm I'm gonna just start writing the word. I don't know. The south we have a spinner. And spells wavering. Similar to on the other side, although my guess is placed differently, whatever. Oh, and this is also an anti-magic square. To the north, we see a door on the left, and then on the right, and then in front. Which is not a perfect mirror image, which I feel good about somehow. I kind of would feel like it was wasted exploration if I was doing sort of the same thing twice. Oh, also anti-magic here. Of course, why not? But not here. Looking to the east, I see anti-magic and a spinner. That makes me at least revise the position of the spinner. Don't know about the anti-magic yet. And one to the south, we can detect anti-magic to the south. So that's one, two, three. East, we have spinners and anti-magic. Not gonna worry about that. West, we have anti-magic and something. And the same thing for here. something from this location, and also not from this location. Which makes me think the interesting part of this zone is just at the edge. wander into it though. Oh, the interesting part is hit point removal. Okay, so this area is the excitement of having your spells cancelled and having your hit points removed.
Now, I didn't set a proper timer for this, but I'm getting the feeling... Oh, there's a door in this one. I'm getting the feeling like it's been close to about a reasonable amount of time by now. So I'm going to finish this fight and then stop this episode for now, I think. Here's our estimated size of this Pharaoh Fist realm. And we, fe I feel like we've kind of barely made a scratch in it. I don't know, maybe we've, made, we've actually mapped more than a quarter. Maybe around a third. But we haven't really found anything of interest. Kinetic kids, clankers... Chain vipers? Chain vipers. They have they have mechanical snakes. I I don't I don't want to see what those look like. Uh I don't know. I wanna attack the Viper and a kinetic kid and kills overture and hide. Um and, and just just kill them all kill kill them all kill kill i don't i don't know what they do i don't i don't want them to live do are they even live they're mechanical are they alive whose castle is this anyway hmm it was an old dwarven mine so that makes me think that we're going to a Dwarven castle. Did we get told that explicitly? Dwarven castle. Yes, we did. So if it's a Dwarven castle... And all that we're encountering are mechanical things... Are these the servants of the dwarves? Or, in keeping with the theme of other places, would this be... These are the servants of Tarjan who are killing the dwarves. In which case, maybe it's... the fight is these mechanical things against the dwarves. That feels like my best guess. But maybe we'll get some exposition or hints. That was a lot of spell points to have spent, but um, we have lots of gems, so maybe I should be doing that. And the hit point totals of these enemies are such that the spells do work, but uh, a single strong spell doesn't seem to be usually enough. Seems to be multiple mong strong spells are required. Thematically, the hammer trap like finally makes sense. Like before, it was I, it felt like, bah, why is there like hammer? Like who tra who protects their traps with a hammer? But now in this place, somehow it feels appropriate. Like I'm sure it's some you know highly complicated mechanical mechanism that smashes my forehead open with a hammer. I don't I don't want an angel's harp. I already have one. Uh they're kinda niche usage. I know exactly where a, a, a trap is on the wraparound, I just don't know how far a wraparound is. It is here-ish. Um, okay, so with that little corridor, whoop, with that little corridor explored, I'm going to call this this session um, 
to a close. I don't know currently whether there's some kind of world in this space, like do we get out of the castle into a world space? Or uh, is this dimension going to be entirely indoors? Well, we can maybe find out next time. Maybe we'll still be in the dark next time, but see you then.